Good morning church family, Pastor Brett here and to visitors welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. As you know, uh, in order to sustain this ministry over a longer period of time, we've decided to move to three devotions a week rather than one every day. I hope to still be blessed by that. As I look at YouTube and other platforms like that, I notice that there's no shortage of skeptics of faith, particularly the Christian faith. There are many oppositions to Christianity. You know, the ones that uh, put on videos that uh, have a go at our faith and the Bible and all that kind of stuff. In fact, it often comes up in my suggested content, which is surprising to me since I only search good Christian things. Uh, but you would know what I mean. Uh, it often is suggested. There's something about the Christian faith that invites a lot of opposition, I think. Perhaps it's a repulsion to some idea of trusting in something we cannot see. Maybe it might seem old fashioned to people, superstitious even, perhaps unscientific, even unintellectual to some. Perhaps the idea of life after death is threatening for people. The idea that there's a separation, that there could be a heaven and a hell. Perhaps there's something almost judgmental in the way that that comes across. Maybe it's bad examples from religious people arguing among themselves, performing immorally. There's something basically intolerable about people that preach virtue but don't practice it. Or maybe it's just the idea of God, the idea of moral absolutes that makes us feel a little less controlled than we would like. Whatever the reason, one thing's for certain. From the very beginning, Christianity has always had its opposers. There has always been opposition and persecution. To those who are committed followers of Jesus Christ, it's a given. We will, from time to time, be caught up either indirectly or directly with criticism or attack. In Jesus' last message to his disciples, on the very night that he was betrayed, he taught them a number of important things. And in the middle of that speech, we read these words in John chapter 16, verse 32 and 33. But the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when you will be scattered, each one going to his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The scattering Jesus speaks of here is the persecution that was soon to follow. Within hours, Jesus would be arrested and the disciples all fleed uh, for fear of their own life. Later on, after Jesus rose and the Holy Spirit came upon the church, there was renewed persecution. And all the way through the church story in the book of Acts and in the New Testament, repeatedly we see this theme of the opposition of the gospel and the severe persecution of the church, and sometimes state-endorsed persecution. I think that's what Jesus meant when he said, in the world you will have many troubles. It's a given for those who would follow Jesus. But the encouragement here that in the word that Jesus gives is that he claimed victory in all of this. He says, but I have overcome the world. In other words, we as followers of Jesus are not in a position of defeat or defense, but in a position of victory. Jesus has won the battle already. Our future is certain. There are times when we as Christians feel like we might be the persecuted minority, but it only seems that way. In fact, we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ and we carry the message of eternal life. It is power, powerful and life changing for any who would believe it. And it is a trick of the devil 
to try and bully us into some kind of embarrassment or shame in order to keep us quiet and stopping us from speaking this message that we have. If you are a follower of Jesus today, you stand in a position of strength and you have a message of hope for the people who would receive it. Hope that would change their lives because the one you stand for and the one you represent has overcome the world. So stand tall, walk tall and follow Jesus without shame. Let me pray for you. Father, we seek always to represent you well. We know the message that you spoke into being, that you demonstrated for us by raising from the dead. That message is powerful to change lives. It opens up a reality of eternity that so many people will scoff at. But Lord, we know the truth of it. For you yourself rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, where you live now and preparing a place for us. And we thank you for that. I pray, Lord, for Christians everywhere, particularly for those who are listening today, that they would not shrink back or be afraid. Yes, there will be opposition, but Lord, there is victory in standing with you, for you have overcome the world. Help us to be strong in that, I pray in your name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Listen to him as you, as you read the Bible. And if he does speak, make sure you trust and obey. Look for an opportunity to bless others and see you soon.